Hi there, I'm Eric Hollenbeck, Director of Percussion Studies at Colorado State University. Today we are here and helping you prepare the 2020 uh, Colorado All-State Band uh, percussion audition material. In particular, we're gonna start with the mallets. And today we are asked uh, to prepare page uh, 30 from Recital Pieces for Mallets by Garwood Whaley. And this is the Corrente by J.S. Bach. And originally this piece was written uh, for cello is actually um, written two octaves below where it's actually written on the, the Whaley page. Um, so he asks, you'll notice there's an asterisk at the bottom of the page that asks you to actually move it down an octave for a marimba. So if you are able to play it on a marimba, I would play it. Um, so your starting note is basically a fifth above C4 or middle C. Um, Cool, some things to kind of look for and to understand about this piece is it's in two sections. You have an A and a B section. Um, there's primarily three scales, and these are major scales that you're gonna deal with, G major, D major, and C major. Those are primarily the three keys and scales that will kind of move throughout the piece that you wanna work on. So I would work on them, um, playing them in two octaves. Similar to that, and also worked on them in fifths and so forth as you practice those, those three scales, G, D, and C major. Uh, there's a couple of wrong notes actually written in the piece. And if you look at the original cello part in measure seven, you'll find that the end of two should be a B um, instead of what's written there as a G and the end of three actually should be an F sharp instead of what's written there as a D. So the end of two of measure seven should be a B and the end of three should be an F sharp. Also, the last six measures or six measures from the end, um, the A uh of one should be an E and the A uh of two should be an F sharp. And that just follows the sequence of moving up the G major scale. So that section right there, you just wanna keep the scale going. And what they did is that those two pitches, they kind of transposed down. Um, so those, those pitches, you definitely wanna play what originally Bach had written instead of what's on this page. The Colorado Band um, recommendations that were on the page uh, mentioned that you should play this at 54 to 60, which is extremely slow very slow, almost half tempo of what is typical. So I tend to play it along with what more cellists would interpret that, and that's usually quarter note equals around 100 to 110. Um, and I would re recommend probably something faster than 54 to 60. So you're in the character of the Carante, which is really a fast dance in three from the 16 hundreds through the 1700s. Um, you wanna make sure generally that the sound you get is a very pure sound. I like uh, basically the innovative percussion William Mersch IP514s, which get a really pure sound. They have a soft wrap, so you don't hear a lot of contact sound from the instrument. Again, Bach, you want a very consistent, pure sound from the instrument. You don't want a very percussive sound on that. So the 514s work really well. Um, and this piece in particular is your opportunity among the three, the timpani, the snare, and the mallets. The mallets is really gives you the most opportunity to be expressive. Uh, and so you wanna take more liberty. Obviously there's no dynamics written in the page and that is typical of how Bach treated this. So it is really up to the individual performer to put those in. Now, generally it should be in the realm of, of forte, a strong presence behind the instrument. But from a micro phrase standpoint, each line needs to have some direction. And so it needs to continually be moving dynamically. And hopefully from the performance, you can kind of catch that. You don't have to do exactly what I did or what you've heard through many of the, the cello interpretations, but you need to kind of have some direction and interest in what we call conversational interest when you, when you perform this. So make it your own be more expressive with it. And if you listen to a cellist play it, they move the rhythm a lot. Um, it is not metronomic by any means. So it's okay to kind of push and pull, especially when you get to sequences like this. You notice most cellists kind of move this forward a little bit, and so that is totally appropriate. So anyways, make sure this one has some character and it has you and your personality in it. Um, you absolutely need to kind of hit the right notes. Those are extremely important um, in this, and I would play every note in the center of the accidental. So all F sharps, all C sharps should be playing the center and not the edge, so you get the purest mode, just even sound all the way through the instrument. Um, so anyways, have fun and enjoy.
In this video, we are talking about the timpani etude for the 2020 Colorado All-State Band Percussion Audition. And this is basically page 27 from Musical Studies for the Intermediate Timpanist by Garwood Whaley. In this one, we have three drums. And like any excerpt or etude that we get to in timpani, it's really the tuning that is kind of the new challenge here. So you want to kind of have a really clear way to do this. So the first thing I recommend, um, just like practicing the actual timpani part, is you're going to have to practice the actual tuning procedure quite a bit to really get the intervals and the intonation, the understanding of flat and sharp within these three pitches that you're asked to do. So we have G, C, and D. What I recommend is that you get a tuning fork, in particular an A440 tuning fork, and you kind of work off this rather than working off a keyboard instrument or a piano. Um, and the fact keyboard instruments are tuned to A442, so right off the bat, you're not really working with a true pitch. And a tuning fork is something you can use in a professional situation or an ensemble situation versus a pitch pipe. And um, it's something that will encourage you to use your own ear to develop the pitches you need from a stationary pitch, the A. So what I recommend is kind of working, first of all, is get your A from the tuning fork, A, and actually singing a little bit this. So you want to kind of make A, me in solfege and go mi, re, do, re, and that's going to get your G from the A. Again, if you sing down to do, again, A, so we got A, G, F, you sing down to F, which is do in this case, and then back up, it kind of sandwiches the pitch you're looking for and you tend to be a little more accurate in it. So G is what we're looking for. Now, from there, we have to tune a C above that. And probably the best way to do that is through a melody, and in particular, Here Comes the Bride. So G, here comes the bride. So we're trying to sing that, and you can sing it falsetto, as I do, because my voice won't quite reach that. And then keep singing. So here comes the bride, here comes, and that comes is a D. So really within Here Comes the Bride, that song, you have your three pitches, G, C, and D. So we have perfect fourth from G up to C, perfect fifth from G up to D, and then we have a major second between C and D. And you want to kind of get comfortable with those. I recommend if you have the opportunity to get to a vibraphone is that you sing and play those pitches on a vibraphone. And then practice using a tuning fork and then check yourself against on um, a keyboard instrument like a vibraphone. So anyways, we have our A. Mi, mi, re, do, re. Here comes the bride, here comes, is your D. So once you get that in your head, then you can tune from there. Okay, so I've got this G in my head. Mi, re, do, re. And I need to know, it's important that the G, which is on, you want to play these three pitches on the 32, 29, and 26, which is the bottom three. If you don't have that, then obviously you can use the upper three, but ideally you want to put it on the bottom three of four standard timpani, so 32, 29, 26. Now G on a 32-inch drum should be towards the top. In other words, we have D in the bottom. Uh, of the range and A is the top, so basically a major second from the top is where we get G. Okay, the C is going to be at the very top of the 29. The range of a 29 inch drum is F to C. It's going to be at the top. And D is going to be right in the middle of the 26 inch drum, which is B flat up to F. So knowing where it lies within the range is helpful to know where the pedal is going to go. Okay, so again, get your G, make sure the G is strong. Mi, re, do, re. Using your mallet, okay, use your left foot and your left ear. Make sure the pedal's below the G, okay, which means towards the bottom. Hit it once. Gliss up and hit it again. Kind of check, and then you have your G. Okay? And then from there, here comes to, to find C. Okay, and C is going to be towards the top. So, again. so you notice I'm only hitting the drum twice. Okay? not hitting it a bunch of times and I'm not singing into the drum. That way it retains the pitch in my head, which is more accurate than retaining it or playing it through your voice. Okay, so we got here comes, um, and then we're looking for D. Okay, so I'm gonna use my right foot, right ear for this drum. Okay, again, 
and glitz up to it. I'm using my mallet, playing it in the playing area softly, and I get my ear down. You're going to hear the pitch better. You're going to hear more of the fundamental pitch if you can get your ear closer to the head as you play. Okay, so we have D, C, okay, and you want to check those pitches to make sure they're correct. A lot of times if you play them in fifths and in fourths, you'll kind of sense if they're kind of out, but you want to check that quite a bit. And that's really the most challenging part, I think, of playing this. Okay. As far as actual playing, there's a couple things that you need to kind of check out. One is that make sure the ending measure of line two, the last measure of the second line, make sure that's a 4-2 bar. It's actually misprinted. Um, so the other um, meters prior to that are 3-2. That bar, you just need to make a 4-2 and play what's there on the page. Okay. Um, I would dampen all quarter note rest. And I would dampen it using the back three fingers only, not the four fingers, but three fingers in the playing area, gently. Okay, and if you can dampen two drums, great. If you can only dampen one, that's fine, but you want to dampen something in every quarter note rest. Coming up to that. Um, you'll notice that the second bar and the fourth bar have staccato markings at the end of the rolls, so I dampen those immediately following that note. So it's really on the E of three, that I dampen those notes. So it's a little bit quicker versus dampening on the next quarter note rest. Um, in this piece, there is no mezzo piano dynamic. All dynamics are piano, mezzo forte, and forte, and fortissimo. So there's a jump there, and you'll notice it basically between the first and second lines where you need to play a figure piano, then mezzo forte, then forte. And you kind of skip that. You need to make sure that is graduated. Um, the other challenging thing about the dynamics is sometimes um, you have an, a long extended dynamic like mezzo forte ended the third line that goes on for almost three lines, or I'm sorry, about two lines and a bar. And you want to make sure that maintains its well through those two lines that you don't end up forte or end up softer on those that you're maintaining. That way when you do have a dynamic change, it's effective for that part. Cool. The biggest thing on timpani is always balancing the drums. In other words, because I'm right-handed, quite a few folks are right-handed, we tend to play the upper drums, the higher pitches stronger, and the lower drums softer. Generally, because of this range, the bottom drum, the 32-inch drum, projects less. It doesn't project effectively as the upper range because it's not in our vocal range. So generally, you need to play the larger, lower pitches stronger and ease up a little on the higher pitches to balance and give the perception of one consistent dynamic across the three pitches on that. So um, I use basically the Javon Gilliam Innovative Percussion 4s, which I like. They have a good combination of articulation um, for the eighth notes um, and have an overall soft covering for the rolls and I, I think blend well. And you want to find a mallet that gives you articulation and not, a, not too much articulation for the rolls on that. Um, so really, I, I think that's primarily what you, you, know, you need to work on with this one. So anyway, spend some time. I tend to go for 92 instead of the slower tempo of 84 um, to allow things to connect a little bit more. Um, so anyways, yeah, have fun with this one and do your best.
Here I'm talking about the snare drum etude for the 2020 All-State Colorado Band Percussion Auditions. Um, in particular, we have Anthony Cerrone's Portraits and Rhythm Etude Number no. 5. And this one actually is really pretty straight ahead um, until you get to line 7. And line 7, those six bars there, rhythmically become really, really syncopated and really challenging as far as getting the time to maintain itself and the quarter note triplets to really feel concrete and the pulse remains the same. So um, a couple basic things. One is that at the 112 tempo, um, which is consistent all the way through it, at the beginning you want to make sure that you have um, a 16th bass roll. In other words, that underneath the roll you're playing. <laughs> 16th. And the roll, because all the rolls in this piece happen at forte, you want to make sure that you're playing three notes per stroke. We're trying to make sure that the three notes um, allow the drum to ring. So, you can hear, dig it up, dig it up, dig it up, versus or two. We're looking for three at this volume and this tempo, so we get this. So you hear the three variations rolls, we're looking for the three notes per stroke, which we call a triple stroke roll. So, um, so one of the, the best ways to work on line seven is to actually write it out for yourself using eighth note triplets for each quarter note, and then circle the notes in the eighth note triplets and put accents above and, and kind of use that as a basis. But through those six bars at line seven, I play the whole thing on the right hand as far as the primary notes and all the grace notes on the left. So I'd practice putting a metronome on and playing. Playing that with just the right hand and then you add the drags in the left hand so you get to get that all to kind of speak evenly. So really work on that rhythm, really break down each bar and understand it. I would just play a couple beats at a time, play a whole bar at a time, work on the next bar and then piece it all back together. Um, a couple other places you have some four stroke roughs in line four, measure three of line four. And I play those as um, an orchestral sticking of right, left, left, right. So I have. what we're kind of working on there. And so I use a sticking to make sure that I can always get into that. So the one, two, three, the fourth bar of line four, I'm gonna play the triplet at the beginning of the bar with the right. And that allows my right hand to start the four stroke rough on the end of two. Hopefully you can hear that. Um, cool, be careful the fortissimo on line five, you don't slow down a little bit. At the very end, the second, um, the penultimate bar, or the, the second to last bar, you have three, the last three sixteenths have marcato accents. I tend to play those dead center of the drum, and use a quick stroke to really make them point or be sharp. So the last, second to last bar is. And then piano really kind of play it out, um, uh, far out, so you really get a good contrast. So anyways, try not to put any accents, especially um, where they're not written. Like a lot of times when I hear um, people play this, they tend to put emphasis on each beginning of roll, like. You really want a more horizontal, linear sound. So each roll has a full body to it, not just a beginning and not just an end. So anyways, hopefully this will help and um, make sure that you get a good pair of concert snare drum sticks. The innovative CL1Ls are great for this because it's got a medium bead for rolls and articulated passages. Um, and make sure your snare drum is tuned well. You get a little bit of muffling on it, not too much, and that the top drum head is basically tuned to about an A which is a little bit higher, it's about a B or C right now. That's fine, you can go A, B, C, but I wouldn't go below an A on that. So anyways, yeah, enjoy this one and uh, have some fun, Work definitely work with a metronome.
So thanks for listening. Uh, make sure that you do follow the tutorial part, not just the performance part, but really enjoyed talking to you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at eric.hollenbeck at colostate.edu, and I'd be happy to help you even further. Thank you.